What is up, guys? You are, well, I'm in for a treat. I don't know about you guys, but I am freaking jacked up today. First check on this line. We're running a northwest line today, or northeast line. I'm sorry, northeast line today. I got one of my great buddies with me who, every time we're ice fishing, you guys have seen him a bunch on the channel. All we talk about is old days gone by of trapping. And I got him with me today is CJ. <laughs> there he is. CJ used to trap. And it's just, you know, the more we hang out together, the more we found out how much we're brothers from another mother's. Once we got talking trapping together, oh my God, he's driven and I am driven and we're both driven to catch. So I'm really excited to share my trap line with CJ and hopefully we get some good trapping stories out of him and I'll share some trapping stories with you guys today. And you're going to see a bunch of sets. Hopefully you see a bunch of fur. And hopefully you guys hear some pretty cool or fun trapping stories and you either learn about trapping for the first time or it brings back some memories to you guys who used to trap or maybe it just it's just a, a recent thing for you if you're a current trapper now. So stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss this episode. I'm excited. I haven't, I haven't been trapping in years. Oh, you're going to love it. I'm gonna, now I'm going to get the bug again. Yeah, I might ruin them. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, CJ. I should have apologized ahead of time. I would not be able to do what you're doing <laughs> sitting in that seat without setting a bunch of steel. Yeah. And I know it's going to be tough for you. I'm just going to have to watch today. Yeah. Be a spectator. Nothing. Nothing. See, it looks good. I'll probably stir my... I'll stir up my skunk if I can find it. There it is. Yep. Trapping. It's just it's tough. You want to catch one in every single trap you set, <laughs> but you know that that's not how it's going to go down. Put that there. So the I brought in the highs wouldn't be highs if you caught them in every set. Exactly. It wouldn't be nearly as much fun. So this set's ready to go. Um, I've been finding this year my catches so far. I'm only up to like six martins. I've checked 30 traps now. Is the boxes on the ground have been better, doing better than like a leaning pole or up off the ground. I like to set them up off the ground because we're gonna we're gonna get some serious snow. We're gonna get four to six foot in this area, so this will save me like two or three storms where I could still catch martin and fur during the storms or after the storms. But um, it is way more effective on the ground, and with these boxes, you can just set on the ground now. It, it, the only bad part is it's taking like a lot of the imagination out. Like I used to go into an area or the woods and be like, all right, look, you could see right there. There's an awesome leaning pole. See that freaking leaning pole right there. And then like you'd set a 220 up on that. You'd use your imagination, like how the fur is gonna come in, how you're gonna set it. And like you were a trapper then. Now you're just bringing these boxes in and throwing them. You know, there's a little bit of imagination. You could pick the spot in the area, but you're not making the set like you used to make. So that's one of the things that you lose out on. Ah, Pine Martin, baby. Yes. Oh yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We got a mess going in here. Let me get to it. Not my favorite trap. It's a bridger and they're bad for a lot of reasons. I'll tell you why after, but there we go. Nice. First, first pine martin of the day. First martin trap. We checked a fisher trap earlier. Male, female. Oh, huh? how do you tell? <laughs> yeah, it's a male. Nice. Oh, he peed on me too. We'll put that pee on the set for the next one. First Pine Martin for CJ. What do you think, buddy? That's pretty cool. Pretty sweet catch. I got a big cedar tree here. I got a little bit of mixed growth with the hardwood and the softwood here. And um, and I was using the partridge carcass for bait, as you can see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put half a, half a fresh one back in there. So there's some fresh meat and I'll put that other nasty one back in there. And I'm gonna reset this. This spot's worth, um, a fisher definitely could travel this spot and another martin or two could travel through here. So I'm gonna get reset. Um, and hopefully we'll get some more action today. That's 
pretty good one for one on the on the trap line. He got me. Oh. This is the worst freaking trap. That would be a good short. Oh, are you still recording? Good. Yeah. I hate this freaking trap. Oh, that got me pretty good. Look at that. Yeah. Ah, it got me pretty good right in the fat of the thumb. Don't rub it. <laughs> Throw some dirt on it. You'll be fine. Yeah, a little blood. Throw a little blood and dirt on it. Uh, yesterday or the day before when I was setting. And he went right in a hole. Like He just sat under a tree like in a stump like that. Mm. And it makes me wonder like how many fisher have been in this tree. You know, how many fisher have been waiting or rabbit been hiding in there. Stuff like that. Spied. We've had action. You see it? She's fired. She's fired. Let's hope we get it. So, I don't see a tail sticking out. Oh, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good yet. Let's see what happened. Ah. Weasel. Yep. So I'll probably throw a weasel box here. Unless it was a Martin. But, uh... See, there ain't much left of that bird to eat. Something worked it for a while. Yeah. I gotta believe that's a weasel, don't you? I would think so. Yeah. I hate misses, even if it's a weasel, but <laughs> these traps are not designed to catch weasel. These are designed for Fisher and Martin. As you can see, the size of the trigger, and it leaves a lot of room for a weasel to get in and around, even over them. But we'll, we're still gonna reset it. Well, uh, I'm going to add a little fresh partridge to it. And you know what? I'm actually going to wire. I'm going to wire this partridge to the back of this thing. So if a weasel comes in again, a lot of times you can catch a weasel in, a, in one of these boxes because they're pulling the bait back through and the bait actually trips the trigger like that did. And it'll snap the weasel too, but it's really like 40% chance of snapping a weasel in with the bait. And killing them. So, so here, he's not going to be able to pull that bait through as easy now. There we go. So that's going to be wired to the back screen. He's going to have to go in and in and out several times to eat this, and then these these streams that I'm set up near like this, they're uh. They're gonna be hits. You know, it's not like your prime best Martin cover. The next set will be in, in the best Martin cover. But spots like this, your, your Fisher and your Martin and your Weasel will travel a lot over the course of a season. All right, we're set. The safeties are off. Box is locked. Get a stick there to stabilize it. We got skunk. Oh, we don't have any skunk. Oh, here it is. It's on the wrong tree. So we got some skunk there. And I just stir that up each time, most of the time. I bet that was Donnie. Yeah. I yeah, that was that was Donnie. Thousand percent Donnie. <laughs> and then uh and then this set's made. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to the, the truck, grab a weasel box, and set a weasel box somewhere in this general vicinity because this weasel's gonna come back thousand percent to eat what he knows is a easy free free meal and uh with the weasel box he's gonna get snapped we got a weasel messing with our fisher martin set so i'm gonna bring in a supplementary weasel box this is not the best design but basically through this was an after effect i had some strap wood around camp so i threw it together eventually i'll put a latch on this so it's easier to get into and check and everything but we got part of a partridge and we got your basic home rat trap that's all this is it's a just a regular rat trap and uh what we're gonna do the only difference is it's got this big the big yellow pad for them to stand on that's not what they're eating off of but that's what they're standing on and you know these things can bite too so you there's always that millisecond when you're setting a trap you just don't know if it's gonna bite you or not so this thing's gonna get set in a couple inches or so. Woo! <laughs> she hot. She hot. 
This gonna be a heck of a video. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get me though. They call that the fur bearer's revenge when the trapper gets caught in his own trap. So he will step on that even if it's up like that. And then it's just wide enough that's going to be in there. And then the only bad design I made on these is you got to have a screwdriver, which isn't a big deal to set these things, but it's not that big a deal. And then there, that's set. And that weasel's going to come in to work this. I could probably set this. Man, maybe I can, I'm going to try it. I'm gonna, I've never done it before. I never ran weasel boxes, but I'm going to set it right on top. Something like that. And now we have a double box. <laughs> we got a skyscraper. And if I miss this weasel, I might put another one on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he's going to come in and he might get me on this box first, but eventually he'll get into this box right here. And, uh, and we'll, we should be able to snap this weasel because the last thing you want to do is catch or is miss a weasel like we did and then a martin or a fish or a target animal come after the trap sprung you know because these are going on a three-day set and then he gets a free meal and you know you never know when he's going to come back and he might end up in somebody else's trap so there we have it that's a that's a weasel box all right this is donnie's favorite set out of all the sets we made that day and we got a trail camera on it Maybe mice. All right, his days are numbered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that trail camera right there. So. Hoping to get you guys some footage of animals working these boxes, how they go in, how they work the box, if you get a big fisher around or, or anything. So that's why we're setting trail cameras on these boxes for you guys. So, so there was, one time I was hunting, CJ and I were just talking in the truck about um, shooting what you want to shoot. He just passed up a deer yesterday. And, and you know, shooting what makes you happy as, as like a deer hunter. And it doesn't have to be a trophy. It doesn't have to have a thousand points. It doesn't have to weigh 200 or whatever. You know, like my favorite hunt ever was a spike horn. His was a one pointer. But I was just telling him a story about when I was at Nine Mile Bridge, there was a guide and he was also hunting. He was a big, big time, big deer hunter. I got on a deer track up there at Nine Mile Bridge and he came in behind me, saw that I was tracking this big deer, it was a heavy deer. And he sk skirted me and got on a road ahead of me and ended up shooting that deer. I think I might've pushed it to him. And I got up to him, you know, cause he was only 500 yards ahead of me when he shot that deer and the thing still giving its last breath. And he was so mad because it had like a little small, I think it was seven point, like a little tiny basket rack. I remember he kicked the deer and, and swore at it. And I, you know, I was young at the time, 20s, young 20s. I didn't know what to do. You know, now I'd, I'd have a serious conversation with the guy. But, but yeah, I remember I just, I was going to help drag it out, help him gut it. And I was so disgusted with his attitude towards taking an animal and this just awesome, majestic, big buck that I'd have been tickled pink to shoot. I was on his track and he knew I was on his track and he shot it, I think because he didn't want me to get it and then the competition. And you know, typical Northern Maine buck, huge body, dressed out, I think 207 or 211, I can't remember, but it just had like a little small seven point basket rack. So the moral of the story is, you know, and CJ and I talk about this a lot is, is, you know, you got to get out of the hunt what you want to get out of it. You know, it's not, what your, how many likes you get on Facebook or how many thumbs up on YouTube or whatever. It's like, it's your, make the hunt your own, do it the way you want to do it and like do it ethically for yourself and like morally for yourself. So that's what we were talking about. Figured I'd let you guys in on it. Yeah, this is a, this is a super old logging road. Um, I didn't really realize it was until I, I went down and there's a swamp down there and um, there's a car in the woods, like a, I don't even know what it is, 1930s car flipped over on a tree. 
But this was one of Donnie's favorite pets too. I hope Donnie starts producing. So right here, I can smell it. It's not looking great. Can you hear that parking? No. Nothing. Nothing. But we'll show you the set anyway. There it is, got a grouse in the back. And a uh, good skunk right there, a lot of skunk. He really liked this set. He put a lot of skunk on it. <laughs> Donnie's downstate for a week. He's got a friend that he's seeing um, this week, so I'm checking his traps today. Good spot. Got a brook. These water. These water and brook and buffer sets are awesome, like for the long run, you know, if you're gonna check this three, four times. If you want to smack Martin in the face right away, um, I would suggest finding a little bit darker woods, maybe getting off these buffers, but I just, I cannot not set a buffer. You know, buffer meaning loggers weren't allowed to come in here and cut because there's water nearby. So there's some little bit older growth, a little bit bigger trees. Got a big spruce right here, fir tree here. Nice spruce. You don't see a tree this big in the North Main Woods anymore. That's almost too big for the equipment they have now. <laughs> <laughs> we got a flowage. We got a blockage. See, I'm not a I'm not a good beaver trapper. I am a I'm a block of run with a 330 type of guy. I've done a foothold a few times with Skip, and that was awesome. But I'm not a good beaver guy, but CJ might be too hard for them. But a lot of times oh. they'll have their hut and they'll run a bank then up in. So sometimes they cap it, sometimes they don't. But those are deadly sets if you can find them. They are traveling up to that very end under the ice for some reason. So. Yeah, that's all new chews up there on that those popple. So like I, I'm smart enough to block off a run like this with a three. I'd put two or three three thirties in that. And just block it off so they've got to go through the 330s. But I don't think they're smuffy enough, they can't get out. There's some ice up on the bank there. Yeah. You could see those slides, but yeah. Yeah, I mean you could get some beaver right here. Now is that like a better spot for like a foothold and a and a drowning set or a snare or something? Or would you still just 330 that's a foothold this? Foothold spot. Foothold. Yeah. See that's where I'm not. See, a lot educated. of times where it narrows up in a soft bank like that, they'll dig into that bank and huh. you put a 330 right at the entrance. Huh. Smash them. But these, these beaver are dead, they just don't know it. Right. That's, days, that, are, days are numbered. As my buddy CJ would say, these beavers' days are numbered. They're dead, they just don't know it yet. So this is probably like a 15 minute ride from snowmobile. Um, once we get some snow and this ice is up and I can get on it with the ice, uh, we'll be beaver trapping, guys. None of my, my buffer stream sets have paid off yet, but they will. I promise you guys that. Man, trapping's hard. We're, uh, my buffer sets are gonna pay off like all at the same time. I think once I get like the first snow or first first batch of, of cold weather, I'm gonna have a, a good run on the buffers. But right now, I'm 0 for like four on them. We've checked a handful of traps in a row with nothing. But this set, there's gonna be a martin or a fisher traveling through here, traveling the stream, traveling this buffer. It's good dark woods. Good mixed growth cedar, spruce, fir, pine. Well, that'll be a catch. You guys, you guys mark it. Mark it. <laughs> <laughs> this is more like a travel way. You know, like, like the, the way these buffers and streams are, or they're, they're travel ways, and your, your mustelids are always going to travel on them. It's not that they're going to live in this. They're going to live in darker, thicker woods, more squirrely woods. 
but they're going to travel these, and that's why I'm setting these buffers up. I think I see a tail sticking out. Tail sticking out, buddy. Heck yeah. Yeah. That could be one of two things. It's a nice Martin. Nice Martin. Yes. Got him on the buffer. All right. How awesome is that? I am pumped. Yeah, buddy. This is an absolutely gorgeous specimen of a pine martin right there just an awesome awesome pine martin right there incredible specimen he's a male <laughs> he's a male he's got an audi yeah he's got an audi down there two freaking martin today already bud this is awesome <laughs> what is better than trapping i'm just bringing the lock i didn't do any of yeah. the work that's just, that's the picture perfect textbook most beautiful Martin you can catch right there. Full size male. It's really cool. And they're prime. I know we're on the early part of the season, but all those ones I've done the other day were prime. Dang it. Wow, I was really hoping on this one, TJ. Matter time. Yeah, this one, Donnie loved this one, and we got a trail camera set up on it. Everything looks good. And then I'll, a lot of times I'll take this, this is a, a partridge and just grind it into the, into the log. You can't leave any visuals, but now if a Martin or Fisher goes up and, and sees it, that could, you know, his nose is going to be on that. That could be the enticer to get him to actually run through that hole and into the box. This one's got a wood hole in the front of it. Um, and we're only allowed a four by four inch hole in the state of Maine right now because of, because of uh, lengths. They're Fisher exclusion boxes. Crow flight, we're not far from where we took that first mark of the day. Yeah. Like crow flight, but the wood's trying to justify it. Once you get in here and see the wood, you're going to see that it can hold a lot of Martin. You get that green carpet under your feet. Oh, it's, uh, that gets my, my hair standing up for sure. Ain't nothing like a green carpet. <laughs> There's a trap right there. Doesn't look good. No, nope, we've had nothing. Now, once again, you know, I'm up off the ground. This is like a modified leaning pole, and I'm not really smacking them in the leaning poles. You know, this will be a great set come, uh, oh, this is the first one I use fish. Um, now I've heard, I've since read that the fisher don't eat fish, which I don't know if I believe that or not, but there's, uh, I wanted to, to show you guys, there are crappie in the North Main woods. Crappie? Good ones, the, yeah, and white perch in the North Main Woods. Two of the best eating fish. My buddy Dudley caught those, so I'm gonna leave them in there. I might actually, but I'm gonna throw this partridge in there too. I might put a little bit, grind it in. Get a little fish smell there. Some of these say, I don't know if they eat fish or not. You guys that trap at home, you let me know if you would use if you have used and and uh, and how good it is to use Martin, I mean, uh, fish for Martin or Fisher. I know it's in the name, and you would think that they eat, they eat a lot of fish, but and we got a wire front for this one. So one thing I didn't do a lot of that I 
I've been doing lately is wire the bait in. So if a Martin somehow gets past the trap or a weasel gets past the trap, then he's not going to pull the bait back into the trap. And also he's got to come in a few times. So I'm trying to wire it to the back. And we're going to reset it. This is a old Victor, I think. Looks like a Victor. Doesn't it? And it's got like the Martin or Mink trigger, they called it, with a cross. And uh, pretty good trap there. That's an old one. That's one of Donnie's really old 120s. It's in there pretty good. And then we'll grab that fish. I see, I don't think that's a very good bait when it's frozen solid, do you? <laughs> no. The thing about the partridge is, like the feathers are still there and it looks good and edible, but I don't know, maybe I should, I'm gonna leave that there for a free me. Oh, I can't, I can't leave it. It'd be visible bait, so. No free meals. So this one, I think I hung a big ribbon to see if it worked as like a visual attractor. We're not allowed any visual attractors in Maine. We used to hang wings in a tree and stuff like that, or a lot of guys did tin foil or something like that. But we are allowed to flag our traps with ribbon. So this one I flagged with ribbon and we'll see how it works. Once again, you got that beautiful green carpet. From here, it looks like we got nothing. I thought this would be a weasel set for sure. But this is what you're looking for for, for the best marker cover. So we got nothing. And then on the first check of the year, like this, I like to double check my, my spring safeties and make sure these are off. Because <laughs> you can't catch anything if there's if those are uh one uh one little trick I'll show you on the front of the box is with these with these little openings that we have that's a four by four and i've made it into a diamond i turn the square diamond wise because uh if you guys are going to make these do that if because a fisher or a martin's face is more wide sideways and it's, they use their whiskers just like a cat would to see what they could fit in so rather than have the square you know vertical or like normal i spun it so it's a diamond and then if you lift the front of the box up like an inch or two um, up off the ground it also makes that hole look bigger to them because their their head is going to be an inch or two off the ground too so they don't have to like go down to get in so you, you got to try to make it as inviting as possible with that uh with that fisher exclusion device this doesn't look good tj you got a ground diamond on it guys if you've never trapped it's like having waking up and knowing christmas presents are all under the tree every single one of these you check and then it's like oh if there's nothing in it it's clothes yeah <laughs> it's oh socks <laughs> <laughs> Can't Big see black it, tail. Can't I'm, thinking see it I'm thinking fishing. So it could be a martin. Yeah. Oh, I see it there. Boy, that's a long tail, buddy. Yeah. The trash is way back in the box. Ah, so. uh, I don't know. That's a fisher, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it is a Martin. It's a Martin. <laughs> yes, another nice. Martin. 
That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't know I'd catch something this spot or not. But look at this bend in the river. Oh, and we're like so high up on this ridge. I was like, I don't care how many times I check this. If I don't catch anything, I'm going to walk into this spot and look at the river every day and see what comes down it. Look what we got. Nice. Nice catch. Another high five. I'm pumped, guys. This is number three for the day. This is number three for the day. Oh, look at that. Snapped him in the head. That was a good quick kill. Yeah. See, he's, that crushed his skull. He's done. Yeah. He's coming back out with it in his mouth. Yep. Oop. Yes, what a catch. What an awesome Martin. Three for the day, buddy. That's amazing. Yep, this is number three for the day. If you guys at home, I haven't fully decided if I'm selling furs off of YouTube or not. I think I am gonna. But if somebody wants this Martin right here, this is uh, number three on this one. So we'll either go in the comments or maybe we'll go in the, in the, um, through the email. But that's just an awesome, that's got to be a male. He's huge. That's just nice, Martin. Look at the fur on him. Just, they're like little bears, you know. And then every single one of them, no matter what, none of them have the same mark on their throat. They all have that orange throat patch that's different. It's so cool. It's like their thumbprint or hmm. a fingerprint for like a human. It's super cool. But yeah, this set, you know, I, I was in this woods and there's just so much blown down and stuff. And I was like, I want to do a leaning pole, a leaning box. And it's pretty high off the ground. And I usually try to make it as easy as possible for an animal to get into my trap. And this one might not be as easy. It's two, three feet up. But I said, with this stream here and the bend in it and the swamp out there and this ridge, I mean, if I was a martin or a fisher, I'd be running this ridge every day. So <laughs> I said, I don't care if I catch anything in this trap or not. I want to, uh, I want to go check that spot and see how pretty it is every single day. So that's why I set it and got lucky. So there's number three for the day, guys. Just an awesome, awesome pine martin. And he, they go through that tr that box and trap so fast to get that bait because they're they're probably trying to kill it, thinking it might be alive. That he actually got some of it in his mouth. And you can see they got like super sharp canine teeth. I don't know if you could see that or not with the with the GoPro, but look at the the uppers and the lowers. And these are just like razor blades, way sharper than a dog's teeth or anything like that. And then you know they all they all have different coloration. Like this is a nice pale orange one like that. You flick it and the fur will stand out. And then um, and a lot of them have like a white face and white ears and stuff. They look cute as heck when they're dead, but <laughs> I've seen them alive. <laughs> they, there ain't nothing cute about them. So I'm going to reset this. I'll show you guys the reset. I'm going to hit the reset button on it. Um, probably, you know, one thing I haven't noticed and I've tried over the years is um, if fresh or older partridge works better. And I really don't know the answer to that. So, um, I, you know, a lot of people say you got to have something dead stinky like for catfishing and stuff but i was catfishing with my buddy dudley and he said no the fresher the better for catfish it's just the stinky stuff you know bring them in quicker because they could smell it and I, he was right we put on fresh perch and threw it out or fresh whatever we had and we caught catfish on the fresh stuff way better than like stinky old stuff so um it's kind of changed my mentality like if i'm a martin i probably want to eat something fresh yeah. you know i'm gonna eat something stinky but if I, if that's all there is, but I want something fresh. So, um, so I'm going to wire the fresh one in. I'm going to take this guy back with me in case we need him. And then, uh, I'm going to reset this set and, and hopefully we'll catch another one or this is a really good location to catch a fisher. Anytime you're, you're on ridges, mixed growth, whether you have the, the softwood green growth and you got some hardwood mixed in, you got a, you got a nice stream down there. Uh, it's a really, really, really prime spot to catch a fisher. And guys, like, I talk about a lot of this stuff, and you watch me thinking I know a lot of stuff, but I don't. I'm, I'm still learning myself, and when I got into trapping 20 years ago or so, it's super secretive. Like, trapping's changed a lot. Like, now there's guys on YouTube, and there's videos on YouTube, and there's books and magazines. Like, when CJ started, too, I mean, we've had this conversation at dinner. Like, books no one helps you. <laughs> like, unless you have an uncle or dad or somebody, you know, you either read it in books magazines for a fishing game like like a religion reading that thing or you go out there and you learn it yourself so a lot of the stuff i learned myself i've had some mentors and a lot of help on the way too but um like like one question i've had 
is you've got three notches on this and I still, you know, my age and all the fur I trap, I don't really don't know the difference between those. Like I don't, like I always figured like this third one, you know, you got more of a snap because it, it's putting way more pressure on the springs when you go all the way into the third one. And then the second one's a little less and then the first one's like a hair trigger. That's how I've always thought about it. But a lot of it, like somebody told me once too, like another trapper, that it just has to do with how far you want them in before they trip the trigger. I don't know if that's true or not. So like, if you guys are watching this at home and you're trappers, let me know your thoughts on it. And then a lot of times like, it, there is a little bit of artwork to how you bend your triggers. Like this is just a standard bend there. I do like to bend them back a little bit because like when I'm walking in the woods, if there's a stick pointed at me, I go around it. But if there's a stick pointed away from me, I just walk right over it. So like I figure that's more inviting for a Martin to try to run through that you know, like it's two sticks, so. So we got this rebated. I have all my sets pretty much uh, rigged in the boxes for the second one, so that's what I'm on for my second one. And I rig it, uh, the, the trigger facing forward. You could rig it this way too, and bend them back the other way, but I have it rigged that way. And then I really like having these blocks. You know, I used to, so that block right there, and that stabilizes the trap right there, so the, so the trap's good. I don't have to bend up or down the springs. and. You know, I used to have blocks like that, even if I didn't have a box and I was trapping like with a 220 or something, you could just nail that block to a tree and snap it on hardwood and it was good. But that's locked. We finally caught one with a diamond opening. And uh, I got my skunk here and we got Martin number three for the day. What a freaking day, huh? <laughs> CJ got to see his first Martin of the ever caught today and now he's seen his third one. Now, now he's seen three. Yeah, what a beauty, huh? Yeah. Just a cool, cool animal. And the fur is just amazing all the way around it. Yeah, awesome, buddy. buddy. Good job. Thank you. I love this stuff, guys. If you can't tell, it's a little bit different version of me when I'm out here. <laughs> so. There it is. And I can't tell. Can't tell. Don't see a critter. We got action. We got action, but no critter, I don't think. I know we got action, folks, but I don't know what's in there. Ah! Not only did we have a miss, not only did we have a miss, but he ate all of it. He'll so, be back. Yep, so he'll be back. Whether We don't know what it was. I'm guessing weasel. The cool thing is I got weasel boxes right in the truck, and it, this isn't a terrible walk out, so I'm going to go grab a weasel box and set it somewhere on this log, and then... The all right, we got a weasel box. A little bit of Kronk's Allagash Fur Call. It's one of my favorite scents. Uh, Oscar Kronk made this. I think Rickards makes it now. He's uh, he's retired, but that's good stuff right there. If you're in the Allagash, got to use Allagash Fur Call. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna set this uh, this weasel box. And that's set. He's gonna jump through this. Oh, I got the hole upside down, but that's all right. Doesn't matter. One of the, another stupid law on lynx ex or fisher exclusion boxes is this hole can only be two inches on this thing <laughs> on a weasel trap with a rat trap don't ask me why in case a lynx sticks his toe in there i i don't know but there we go we're set with that oh shoot we missed a martin we did not miss a fish a weasel oh yeah didn't see that earlier or that martin came and ate the bait maybe after a weasel maybe. but yeah there's martin poop on the on the tree so that's right where he sat and ate and then pooped. So we missed a Martin. I think maybe a weasel tripped my trap first. Um, Cause usually you don't miss Martin in 120s. But um, so we're just gonna set this here. We're gonna set this on the ground like that. That's good to go. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of Allagash fur coal in here. Just in case they come to the door. It makes them, smells like warm apple pie to them. They smell that warm apple pie inside the door and they're gonna come right in. So there we go. We're set up here. We're set up with a little weasel box there. We got Martin poop on the log. I think that Martin's days are numbered, but we're gonna find out. Oh yeah, <laughs> his days are numbered. All right, buddy. That's what trapping's all about, guys. You don't catch one every time. And uh, there's a lot more failures than victories in it. And you gotta take the victories when you can get them. It makes them so much sweeter, right? Yep. My pants fall down. Film high, don't don't show people my boxers. Okay. It's uh I change them every Monday. <laughs>
But this is this is how ridiculous it is for Fisher exclusion. <laughs> That's how ridiculous this is. I missed a I missed a big Fisher here yesterday in a 150 box, so I'm gonna try to set a 220 box. So let's get in there if we can. So, out with that one, in with this one. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done trapping. <laughs> so this is a 220, this is your standard Fisher set. I might have a 160 in there. No, it's 220. So there it is. Um, that's brand new 220, it's never been used before. We're gonna get this thing set. Oh, wow. That ain't no 120. You gotta be really strong to set these. <laughs> nah. But by the end of the year, this hand is really strong. All right, so we're gonna split the jaws. You can catch a Martin in these two, but it's kind of made for Fisher. And we're gonna bend them back just a hair. Not much, because I got the bait really close to the trap on this one, just because I didn't want to make this box any bigger than it is. Uh, to make this Fisher exclusion to box that the, that the state makes me make, this can only be seven and a half inches by one and a half inches. There's regulations on that. There's regulations on the screens, how big they could be and how they're secured. There's regulations on the lock on the box. And then here, I'm allowed a six by seven hole, but it has to have an immediate 90 degree baffle. So, when he comes in this hole, he can't get to the bait until he sees a baffle that leaves a hole that's six by six is all he can get in around the corner. Mm. And then I put, I don't know if this is legal or not, I'm pretty sure it is, but I put lobster trap wire on this end and that end so there's an airflow and so the fisher could actually see that there's food up in there and hopefully he goes in and puts his blinker on, goes around that baffle and runs into my 220. But it's the only chance we got. But we're gonna drip a little bit of this Allagash fur coal. I don't mind. If it was nasty, I wouldn't put it there because it'd get all over the fur, but I'll put it there, I'll put it on the bait. And then we're definitely 100% wiring that bait up because it is really close to the trap and I don't want to get pulled into the trap and, um, and, and taking away any of the blow of that trap when it smacks them. So I'm gonna wire that partridge up to the back and I'm sure he's gonna work the back of this box where the partridge is pretty hard. And I'm gonna hope that he gets just enough but not, not enough to satisfy him. But just enough so it pisses him off enough to come to the front of this box. There we go. And uh, try to get this partridge out. So, so we're wired in there. We got our trap right here. I think I got this one set. This gives you two options. Pretty sure I got it set on the tightest one. You don't want to get caught in a 220. Sometimes the little guys actually whack you harder than the big ones. So that's a fisher trap right there, guys. That's a lot bigger. That'll kill your cat. Maybe your dog. And then that's going to go in there. Safeties are off. This is closed and locked. Guys, you have no idea how hard it is for me to not take this 220 and go set it in a leaning pole over there. You mean like, the one right there? Don't even point it out. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. <laughs> you have no idea how hard this is for me, but I follow game laws, even if I don't agree with them. And this is the dumbest thing in the world. I'm gonna tell you that right now. But they, um, they're trying to protect lynx and in doing so, they're letting they're letting all the fisher, the big fisher, get away, which kill the link. So, all right. So now for since that fisher's not allowed to go straight into the trap, I gotta make a 
he has a side door. I got to get a log or something and cut it so he has a ramp to get in here. And it's just, it's ridiculous. This is when I could just take that 220 and put it right on that and have a fisher tonight. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard. And I know there, a warden would never find this. And I know I'd never catch a lynx in it, but I follow the game laws and uh, I do my best. So, what it is. Oh, there's a hole there. Yeah, too funky. Uh, a little too dead, I guess. Let me find another one. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. You ever just do something that you just know is foolish or dumb? But you gotta. Perfect. Right? Best it can be. Yep. So, if you guys at home are wondering what axe I'm using, because I got a lot of axes to choose from. This one is a Chinook Wangen. It's made by Emerson Stevens. Perry Green, who was a world-class axe racer. He won the world championship. He's from Bangor, Maine. He designed this axe head and named it the Chinook Wangen. Wangen was a, like, a, like a cache, I guess, where you could get supplies like on a river in Alaska or wherever, like on the trap line. And Chinook was his favorite uh, dog breed. But it's kind of like a Hudson Bay pattern, a little bit wider. This was made in Oakland, Maine in the 1950s. And there's only four of these that I know of. I have one, Donnie has one, Matt Bemis has one, and then uh, that guy from Massachusetts has one too. And those are the only four that are known to exist. And I just, I just worth a pile of money probably, but I love it and it's worth nothing if you don't use it in my opinion. So that's the one I use. It's about one and three quarter to two pounds. And I got it on like a, oh, probably 18, 20 inch stick. And it you could pack a punch with it and really clear some stuff and it's fun. It twirls in your hand pretty good and you could shave stuff with it. And that's the ax I use. All right. Well, I would take right here. Guys, CJ's gonna show me um, like a mink set and how he'd set it up for mink. Cause I'm, I don't know anything about mink. See, I picture the mink coming up. I set them up. I dig this all out. I put a one and a half coil spring right here, so if he has to come down, step in that one and a half coil spring, come out here and drown. Easy enough. Simple. Holy cow. Works good. Would you put a, a handful of sets here or just one? I'd probably put one. There's already kind of a half this coil spring over there. Yeah. I'll dig that out, shelf it, put another one there, because they like to go in every nook and cranny. They're hunting like frogs, crayfish, fish. Yeah, anything. Yeah, you could put a bank then or a little pocket set right there. I'd probably just these two with a little bit of lure would be everything you'd need. Be down the road. Sweet. Pretty awesome, thank you. I'm gonna look into the laws and see about set the foothold uh drowning set. I don't know what the law is anymore with uh links, so we're gonna look into it and maybe we'll we'll do some setting on it. I'd be so excited. I used to <laughs> love oh my god, that's awesome. I had to take more time and made a, like a little cave, dug that out, got it nice and set. Take a piece of wire, a little drowning set. Oh, yep. It'd be money. And then like the wire goes to like a an anchor or a I used to a rock. Like or? that wasn't super deep, but I used to like to put a stake out a little ways so if the mink swam out with the trap it'd go around that oh okay and then he would drown but you could just reach it you could be a, just a regular rubber boot trapper yeah didn't have to worry about wading with hip boots gotcha. stuff on. yeah i might have to try it this year i don't know how many mink are up here in the north main woods but i know there's some you know it's not like down home but i know there are some right there's some muskrat but not much 
muskrat got a tough life. There's a lot of predators up here, so there's a lot less of those prey animals, but mink, I have seen. I think we got a fire. Uh, man, I can't tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yes. Nice. Nice. Martin. Martin up. Oh, smacked him in the face. Another good hit. Yeah, good catch on him. He must fly through that so fast for him to still get the partridge. Right. And then get whacked in the head like that. Is this number four for the day? Number four for the day. What a day. The record this year has been five, and we still got a handful of traps to check. The partridge is... Oh, this is one of those traps that doesn't open too well. All right. He's... There we go. He's got a mouthful of partridge. All right. There it is, guys. Absolutely gorgeous, Martin. Man, look at the chompers on him. Mm -hmm. Died quick, died ethically. Um, if you guys want one of these, Martin, we're, Donnie and I and, and other partners are bypassing the, the whole process and we're gonna sell direct to uh, YouTube subscribers. So if you if you want a Martin or a Fisher off this line, pick and just, Good just job, buddy. thanks buddy. This is, how's your first day on the, watch, on the trap line? It's pretty awesome, isn't this it? This is fun. Yep, so what I'm gonna do is, so all the all... trapping I did, guys, was like the southern part of the state. We didn't have Martin. We had Fisher, but we yeah. didn't have Martin. So I've never seen this before. It's really, really exciting to watch this go down with my good buddy Joe. We've talked about this forever, and he finally let me tag along. I had, took a lot of begging. But... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but he let me come. Yeah, that's... So ZJ and I have had a lot of long days ice fishing. And uh, and all we talk about, you know, we talk about our passions, obviously, and we talk about trapping because it's, as you can see, it's definitely a passion of mine, and and it's always been a passion of his. And man, like we were, we were like really good friends right from the first day we ever met each other, first day we fished together. And I remember I was sitting at his dinner table, and I was like, "You trap, you trap." Did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> then we built bunk beds. Yeah, and we built bunk beds. <laughs> yeah, and got in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. And then to hear like some of his old trapping stories. He, CJ, he doesn't open up like a lot. Like he hasn't been in front of the camera as much as I have. As you can see, like over you know a year or two ice fishing together, he's awesome. Um, but like privately. He's, man, some of his trapping stories are just awesome. I, he'll share them with you eventually, guys. and Or he might not. You know, that's, that's uh, when you hold something that dear, you know, you keep it private too. But, um, like, his trapping stories were just awesome. And we shared a lot. It was so cool. But there it is, number four, four for, the day. for the day. Yeah, I lose count. All right, so we got to drive through this mud hole every day and it's pretty deep and i'm not worried about it with the truck i got four wheel drive all that stuff but when it ices up and it's like an inch and a half two inches of ice and you can get halfway across it and it breaks and you go straight down it's hard to get out of so i'm gonna try to drain this puddle a little bit i got the shovel there it's uh it's good hard ground that's the only bad part but if i can get this lower then i'm not even worried about breaking through you know If it was easy digging, it would have already been done. That water will probably erode some of this spot too. You're pretty deep. <laughs> DJ's giving me the look. You better go deeper. Yeah. I thought I was in the low spot of this puddle, but and each time I drive through, it'll push them out. I think you are in the deepest spot. Best spot? Deepest, yeah. Trouble is, it is all just rocks and shale. I got her started, that's the key. There we go. 
Here we go, buddy. Shovel's not holding up too well, but. A lot of people don't know the shovel can be one of the best tools on the trap line. Pickaxe here wouldn't be bad either. Got any water coming down? Yes, she comes. Joe Holland, saving North Main Woods Road one shovel for all the time. <laughs> There you go. It's all in the day of trapping up in the north wood. Never know what you're going to get into, but I do know we're going to be driving through here every every uh, three days or so. So if I can get this lower and I break through, I'm not too worried about it. It's when you break through and you you go straight down. It's hard to get back up on top. Yeah, it is. And it's impossible to break it out in front of you, so. A lot of people walked a long way because of that. But softening them out. The icebergs are coming through. How many gallons per hour are we at? At least 30. <laughs> what are we? I think you can get to 45. 45? You're in good shape. 45 is the goal, guys. I think that next shovel full. Well, right, right there. Right there is going to be the ticket. Rocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're at 45. Oh, she's flowing. We got a heavy flow. Now we're about 50. That feels good. He's running now. I'm not going to lie, that actually feels pretty good. Oh, it's getting easier every time. This she is, is flowing uh, now, buddy. This is Joe's culvert. <laughs> That's the other culvert. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's culvert wins. They put the culvert in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that yeah. She won't take long to drain now. Sweet. My sneaker's going to be dry. <laughs> A little less high on your boots. Good man. Yep, now I can see my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Moat. I don't know why this feels so good. But did I just you used to do this when you was a little kid? We did it. I I'm did not going to lie. In grade school, on rainy days, all of us would turn into, uh, what's it, some kind of engineers, not mechanical, but some kind of engineers. Ditchers. D ditchers <laughs> the and The world needs pickers. ditch diggers too. They always told me in <laughs> junior high when they'd look at my grades. And we would dig with our heels, you know. Yeah. On the hill, we dig See how far rivers, you could get it to go. turns, and go dam up somebody's river and divert the water. <laughs> That's what we did in recess. We're pretty simple folk up here in Maine, and uh, you know my teachers back then said it wouldn't do me any good later in life. But look at me now, guys. Yeah, I'm digging dish. <laughs> I'm still doing it. All that practice paid off finally. So Miss Cunningham, if you're watching this. All the time you told me to stop digging ditches. And it wouldn't do nothing for me. 
look at me now. I'm the best dish digger in the North Main Woods right now. He's flowing now. Oh yeah. Miss Cunningham is watching too, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> She's the best fourth grade teacher I ever had. How many did you have? Just her. <laughs> well, no, she had a replacement because she had uh, Tommy. Uh, she had to go out on leave because Tommy was born a day after my birthday. I told her she had to hold on for my birthday and she held on a little too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I think we had Miss Mason replaced her. And then we realized how nice Miss Cunningham was. And I liked her so much I went to work for her, for her family after that. We're supposed to be running a trap line. We're supposed to be pretty serious running a trap line. And here we are playing in the mud. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do anything else though. You having fun, TJ? Yeah, today's a good day. Never knew what you'd expect coming out here with Trapper Joe on the, on the trap line. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, she's draining. Good brook trout. Oh, he just went under. Oh, must be. Must be a brown trout. <laughs> Look at that, you can see the middle of the road now. Yeah. Yeah, you can really see my feet. Holy cow. That's awesome. Oh, that's not as awesome. <laughs> But it still look. Yeah. Oh yeah, drop the four inches at least. Oh, we got a nice jam. I know we could leave right now and this would drain, but I wouldn't get a chance to watch it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch. If you guys at home are liking this as much as me, let me know in the comments. And I'll find more ditches. I'll find more puddles to drain. My buddy always said, he worked for the state and he said if you run out of shovels lean on each other <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one i always got a kick out of that they promoted him to manager after that we found bedrock This is awesome. Just makes me happy. <laughs> simple things in life. Pretty simple, ain't it? Yep. But it does make me happy. Yeah, I think you go both deep, you're gonna do it. Yeah, it's, I'm into some good stuff there. The share doesn't make it very easy up nope. here. You get quite a lot of it, John. You can see the high water mark was right, right here. Oh wow! So it started there, and it's there. You couldn't see that rock in the middle. No, it's chopped about a good three inches. So this isn't just playground fun. There is a reason I did this. Donnie is going to thank me for doing this when we don't get stuck here. A little preventative maintenance on the road crew. All right guys, we're back on the trap line. Got a Martin box down here. It's kind of mixed growth. It's a little bit more open than normal, but it's on a funnel of a nice, nice piece of forest, piece of woods. It's hard to find woods anymore. So we're gonna check that. We're sitting on four Martin for the day. We got four Martin uh, piled up and we're gonna try to drive another one into the truck. So here we go. Most I've caught in a day this year has been five. We're gonna see if we can hit five and then go from there. And here it looks like 
looks like we got activity, but I'm a long way away. <laughs> Moose wallow or something? Like a moose wallow? Oh. It's like a tail, but I can't quite tell. I know it. Well, now it's looking like nothing. Now it's looking like nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a Martin or Fisher or Fisher was going to come through here this year. It's just a matter of time. All right. Well. The thing about trapping is you don't catch one every time or they wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> All right, Joe, do we get him on this one? Man, I hope so. We've had uh, two two or three misses in a row with weasels. Um, but I I got high hopes. I love this country. I like this set a lot if I can find it. And we're due. Oh, I see it. It doesn't look phenomenal. No, nope. it's empty. Nothing. Still got the bait. Bait looks good. Trap looks good. Everything looks good. Except for there's no uh, fur in it. <laughs> Alright. We'll get them on the next one. Guys, see? Guys. Stay tuned, because the cool thing about the trap line is there's always next one. It's so exciting. It's like opening up a new gift every day, right? Yeah. This doesn't matter. Water trapping, Martin trapping. CJ's excited every trap, too. It's just, you never know. It's awesome. And then, like, even the misses, we were just talking, like, you get up and you see that spring go on. It's like, something happened. It's so exciting to find out what's in there. And then you open and there's nothing in there. And you're like, socks again for Christmas. <laughs> or dad got another tie for Father's Day. <laughs> but it's awesome. These aren't even my traps. And I'm, I'm feeling that competitiveness. And I didn't even do anything. Guys, I just saw a Canada lynx. It's a federally threatened species. Oh my God. But yeah, I just saw a lynx run up the road. And uh, I couldn't tell if it was a coyote or a lynx from the distance. But when we got up here, you could actually see the wet print still in the road. You know, in five minutes, those prints are going to be gone forever. It didn't. I don't know if the camera. Yeah, let's it. see if the camera will pick it up. Like the gloss see it of right the here. But there, you could actually see the, the tow tracks. Uh, I can't get it. They're a pretty squirrely animal. I gotta see it. There's there. a pretty good chance you walk in them woods, you'll actually see them. Really? Like they don't. They're not scared. They're weird. Yeah, let's go see if we can find them. Cause we had them down here, right? Yeah, right there. I can see the toes right here on this trail. Oh, you can actually see the toes? Right here, going this way, I can. That's cool. Let's go in the woods, see if we can find them near my trap. Carried in one of them behemoth uh, 220 boxes in here. It just looks and smells like Fisher to me, so I don't know. We'll try it. That's a deer trail. I'm bringing a partridge and a trail camera so we can set a trail camera. I'm curious how they react with this bath. Yeah. Oh, We got fire. We got fire. I don't see anything, but we got fire anyway. Oh, there's something in there, buddy. Is there? Yep. Sweet. I'm not telling you what it is. Oh, nice. <laughs> Number five, Martin. So guys, I I trapped. I ran some really successful trap lines uh, 
about 18 years ago and I don't remember ever catching five Martin in a day. Now you've done it twice? I've done it twice this year. Smoke this guy in a baffle box. Baffle box meaning there's a baffle right here. You can't. And that, that guy went to 220. Yeah. That's a head crusher right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trap made for a fisher, but. Oh, the things about traps are they are not discerning. They are not discerning. Golly. Sweet. He got a mouthful. That was his last bite. That was his last meal. Number five for the day. Nice, beautiful, pale one. I'm guessing that's a female. Yep, feels like it. Nice, beautiful female. Take that back. Look at that throat patch, huh? Wicked. That's cool. Every one of them's different. Isn't that awesome with the with Sweet. the dots in there? I love the white faces and the ears. A lot of those in Maine have that. And it's not a huge one, but it is some soft and nice. Number five, Martin. I just cannot believe it. Awesome. Crazy. I wish I would have had it, uh, the trail camera in here when I set up, but it is what it is. I'm gonna, I think I can catch a fisher here still. And there's been some serious deer activity here since I've been, been here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire this back up. Good job, buddy. Thank you. It's crazy. I, I'm gonna have to look at my record because I mean, these aren't even like firm moving days. We've been having some warm days and once it starts snowing and it gets cold and fur are really active, I don't know what's gonna happen. You gotta hammer them. I, how, I'm hammering them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. So another Martin, number five. I'm gonna catch more here. I cannot five. believe it, CJ. Five, five Martin. Uh, I, guys, I know I've checked traps twice and caught five in a day twice, but I'm not gonna expect five every day. <laughs> <laughs> See the partridge feather? <laughs> oh, trout. Yeah. Crystal clear water. Yeah, it is. Mountain stream. Some cold. Not prime Martin Woods. It's good fisher woods. But I just had a feeling in here and I just love it. So we gotta set it up, up the ladies. I crossed this couple times. Stippling trout. <laughs> oh look at this. Is this not beautiful? Oh I love it. Looks like we've had action. No! Yeah, that is so yeah, weird. Yeah. I am getting cleaned out. What is going on? Didn't why you beat. Is that why? I don't know. It's like five in a row. Oh, nothing left. Wait, like cleaned. Dang. Wicked. But no matter what, we're on a cool spot on the planet. Definitely come back here and catch some brook trout in the spring. I do like the looks of it in here. Isn't this awesome? Pretty. Brook running down through. Nice mature timber. Looks good. Well, we'll snap one here. I promise you guys that. Dang. Okay guys, that's it for the day. I'm pretty tired. I'm worn out. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that was a day. Yeah, we had a good day. Um, one of the best days I've ever had on the trap line, regardless of the furs. I know we had a lot of misses, but we had a lot of activity. Pretty much half the traps. Yeah, right? was, that was a lot of fun. I've never done Martin trapping, so that was a cool experience to me. Thanks for bringing me along. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was awesome to have someone with the same mentality, mindset and uh competitive drive like on the trap line with me i could tell he was getting going like real quick and it's yeah, not even my yeah he's like i want to get one <laughs> and it was awesome and um we got to set a couple traps today too we didn't film a lot of that but 
I, I got one where CJ picked everything on the set. I just did the setting, and um, I'm going to keep him abreast with how that trap does. I'm pretty stoked. I think it's a winner. Yeah, I hope so. Yep, so cool. awesome day. Really appreciate all the support, guys. If you're interested in buying one of those, Martin, uh, shoot me a message. I'll put my email on there so you can shoot me an email. Unless and it comes from my boss. <laughs> That's right. Then, then, it's, then it's my money. Then you got to sell. <laughs> then you got to talk to CJ. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, everything on the trap line is for sale, fully tanned, ready to hang up in your man cave or your den or, or your woman cave or whatever. Um, so... Let me know if it's something you're interested in and let us know how, what you think of the trapping so far and if there's more you want to see, less you want to see, or whatever. But that's what it's going to be for a while, guys. Really appreciate it. See ya.